Welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today I wanted to take just a few minutes to discuss what's the first thing you should do if you just got a Raspberry Pi and want to use it for ham radio. So stick around and we'll get right to it. So over the last month or two we've got quite a few new subscribers to the channel and one of the emails that I often get is, where should I start uh, if I want to utilize a Raspberry Pi with my ham radio setup? So today I wanted to take a few minutes to kind of discuss that. Uh, so first, let's uh, look at Raspbian itself. There's three different versions to the Raspbian Stretch operating system. You can get the full version, which includes pretty much everything. There's also a desktop only version. Now that is basically a stripped down uh, version that's got less installed than the full version, but it does have the desktop GUI installed that Stretch Lite does not offer. Currently, that's the one that I run and the one that I would probably recommend for the vast majority of users. And last but not least, you've got Stretch Lite. Uh, so if you just want to uh, maybe run a web server and you're going to log into it uh, via a, a terminal window only and run everything from a command line, then Stretch Lite might be for you. But if you want an experience very similar to Windows or Mac OS, then I would recommend either getting the full version or the desktop only. And like I said, I prefer the desktop only. Now, I don't have videos for installing the basic operating system, but a quick YouTube search will give you plenty of options. There's lots of videos out there and guys that can show you exactly how to flash the SD card, what software you're going to need to do that with, and then how to burn that image over to an SD card so that it's ready to go when you stick it into your Raspberry Pi. Okay, so now you've got Stretch installed on the SD card. Where do we start from here? Well, it kind of depends on how you want to operate. Um, if you want to operate portable and in the field, you're probably going to want the Raspberry Pi to serve a Wi-Fi hotspot for you. Uh, that way you can run it headless, but you'll be able to connect to it with your phone or your tablet. View the desktop and control the Raspberry Pi. If that's something you need, that is probably the first thing I would get going. Uh, it can kind of be the trickiest at times. There's two different uh, ways that I know of to do it. Uh, the first one is Rasp AP. And I'll leave a link to this video and any others that I mention uh, up at the top or at least down in the description box below. Rasp AP is quick and easy to install. It offers a nice GUI interface. Um, and, and it's, it's pretty good at what it does. The downside to Rasp AP is it will only do one thing at a time. So if you set it up for the Pi to serve as a hotspot, that's all it'll do is, is serve the hotspot. Where if you do it the other way that I'm going to tell you, you can actually do multiple things with it uh, pretty much simultaneously. But Rasp AP is quick and easy to install and works fairly well. Now the other way of doing things is a script called Auto Hotspot. The cool thing about Auto Hotspot is it will connect to your regular shack Wi-Fi while you're in your shack and then as soon as it no longer sees that Wi-Fi connection, say you leave and go out to operate portable somewhere, then it, it realizes that it can't see it and it will generate a hotspot automatically once it's set up and configured correctly. Then when you return to the shack, plug everything back up, it's going to automatically reconnect to your shack's Wi-Fi. Now kind of the downside to the auto hotspot is it takes a little bit more to get it up and going. There's no GUI interface. Uh, everything is command line based to get it going. But that's the preferred method that I run now is the auto hotspot. It works out really well uh, on my Raspberry Pi in my Jeep. When I pull into the garage, it'll automatically connect to my shack's Wi-Fi. And then when I leave out, it automatically generates the hotspot that I need to connect to with my phone or tablet. All right, so now that you've got the auto hotspot set up, uh, if you so choose, 
The next thing I would recommend is getting a GPS dongle to keep time. The Raspberry Pi lacks a real-time clock. Uh, so if you shut it down and you fire the thing back up a couple of hours later, the clock's going to be off by a couple of hours if you do not have an internet connection. Shut it down for two weeks, it's going to be two weeks off if you don't have an internet connection. The GPS dongle overcomes this issue. Uh, it's about a $15 device, and I'll leave a link to one of these down in the description below that, uh, that I run, and I'll also leave a link to the setup video for it. But it takes the uh, GPS unit a minute or two to lock onto the satellites, and then it'll pull time from the satellites and update the PIS clock automatically. And this is critical if you're running some of the newer digital modes like FT8 or JS8 Call. Those require accurate timing in order for the signals to be transmitted at the right time and also to decode incoming signals. So time can be critical with a couple of those newer digital software. So a GPS dongle is highly recommended to keep accurate time on your Pi. So one of the other really popular options that uh, it seems like most everybody with a Raspberry Pi wants to install is Winlink. Uh, Pat Winlink is currently the only version of Winlink that I know that will run on the Raspberry Pi. I've got uh, uh, several videos out there on working with Pat Winlink, both over HF and over two meter packet. Uh, Pat is a really slick piece of software. It doesn't have quite as many options as Winlink Express does. Uh, one of the big ones that sticks out to me is Winlink Forms. Uh, if you're used to using those maybe in an Aries program or something like that, you're going to be missing that functionality with Pat Winlink. Outside of that, it pretty much does everything you need to do. So if you're interested in Winlink, be sure to check out the Pat Winlink videos. Now, to go along with the Pat Winlink, uh, I've written a script uh, called Find RDOP. And what it does is, while your computer is sitting in the shack and connected to the internet, I've got mine set to download once a day the latest RMS gateway list. Then, once I'm in the field, I can use, I can run the Find RDOP script and locate RMS gateways that I can connect to. So it'll give me their location. I can sort those by grid. Uh, I, I can see what frequencies I need to be on and the call sign for that particular station. So that might be something you want to check out if you're going to run Pat Winlink. Another thing you might want to look at if you're running Pat Winlink is propagation prediction. And that's just some software that can help you predict where the chances are of you connecting with another remote station. And it's not only good for Winlink, but let's say you want to establish uh, voice comms uh, over SSB. You can use the propagation prediction software to tell you what's going to be the best band and time of day uh, to try to make that contact. Another video that gets a lot of traffic on my channel is the DigiPeter. So I put this video out, uh, how to build a DigiPeter with a Raspberry Pi. And it's really cool. Let's say I'm out uh, hunting or hiking. I'm kind of close to my, my mobile, but I'm carrying an HT with me. The HT can't necessarily get into one of the wide coverage gateways in my area because it's only running five watts with a very limited antenna. But it can get back to my mobile without any trouble. So I turn on the DigiPeter in the Jeep, and then the HT will send its traffic to the Jeep, and the Jeep will repeat that out with 50 watts and a better antenna, and typically I can get into one of the wide area gateways at that point. So that might be something else you want to consider doing with your Raspberry Pi. There's also a lot of cool uh, digital software uh, if you want to look at running some of that. If you're into PSK31, uh, I've got a video on how to get FL Digi installed, and FL Digi's got a lot of other uh, modes in it. Uh, Olivia and PSK31, several others. Uh, there's a whole host of them that FL Digi can do. So if you're interested in those, be sure to check out that video. Now, one of the newest uh, digital modes out there is JS8 Call. 
and I've got a whole playlist on JS8 Call. I'll leave a link to that down in the description. JS8 Call is some really cool new software that's come out. It's weak signal, so it can decode signals that are 16 dB below the noise floor without any trouble. It's got a lot of other really cool built-in features like relays that you can use. You can do store and forward messaging uh, with it, and you can just carry on a good old QSO with the JS8 Call. So if you haven't seen that software, I highly recommend you check that out as well. And like I said, I got a whole playlist on things you can do with it. Now, if you need to program a radio up, I would recommend Chirp. And Chirp has no problem running on the Raspberry Pi. I use it for just about every radio that I own. I can get a new radio in and have it programmed up in about 10 minutes using Chirp. So fantastic software and something else you might want to have on your Pi and last but not least, let me remind you, don't forget to back up your system. What I like to do if I'm getting a brand new system up and running is I'll get kind of the basics installed. So I'll get Auto Hotspot uh, installed and working, and then I'll get my GPS installed and working. And then I'll stop, take a minute, and make a backup of that system. Now as I go forward, if something gets hosed up uh, installing some other piece of software, I've got a backup that I can fall back on without having to redo all of that initial work. Then going forward, typically after I install a program or maybe a couple of programs, I'll run another backup just so that I know I've got another known good state to work with in case something does go wrong. And then finally, I back up once the system is completely built so that I've got a good image to fall back on. And then I would recommend backing up at least once a week. Uh, it takes five minutes and you need a spare SD card to do it. So it's not real hard. I've got a video out there that will show you just how quick and easy that is. All right, guys, I hope this helps you out if you just got into the Raspberry Pi and want to use it with ham radio. It's a really powerful little computer for 35 bucks and fairly capable. It's not perfect, but it's pretty dang good. All right, until next time, 7-3.